Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Critique Clinic, which is a brand new video series all about giving feedback in an opinionated and factual basis on your miniature submissions to us. So the way this is going to work is we have asked members of the Siege Studios community to submit photos of their miniatures for feedback, and we're going to go through all of those now. If you want to find out how you can submit your models for a future episode, check the links in the description of this episode. Okay, so our first submission here is from Tashes77, who says... Hey boys, big fan of the poddy, and I think Critique Clinic is a great idea. I jumped back into the hobby after a long hiatus, started with some Orc Commandos, trying my best to replicate the heavy metal style. They're about 90% done, but pretty keen for some general feedback. I struggled with the burn scars on the Orc Burner Boy, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on general color choices, as well as any other feedback that you have. So let's take a look here at the Orc Burner first of all. Great set of models to start off with. Uh, lots of different things to add value and interest to when you're painting them. And I think you've done overall a really, really great job. I think, I, I know you mentioned obviously they're not 100% done. So taking obviously that into consideration totally, I still think these are looking really, really great. I absolutely love the purple used on the almost oven mitt glove that he's <laughs> wearing uh, just to hold that sort of barrel of the uh, of the burner. Um, regarding the scars, I think uh, you've done a really great job with them. And I've got to say this, like, you know, one thing I would definitely would say is like with anything like this, when you're painting something that is physically real, looking at real life reference. So like I know a Google image search of uh, burn scars is probably not the, the, the best <laughs> the best search I could I could suggest, but it will help you to kind of understand what that sort of damaged skin in that nature looks like. And you can directly translate that onto the miniature with the right use of colors and tones. Um, the one thing I definitely think that you potentially should take into consideration is actually telling a story with those scars and by doing it with making some potentially look older or newer. And you can do that by adding like a red kind of like filter layer around the edges or in the recesses or maybe over or toning some of them slightly different. So they don't all look like they are exactly the same. Um, obviously that damage to skin happens over time different situations. I think doing a, a bit of color variance on some of those, some of the areas of the skin that's damaged will just help massively to tell a bit more of a story on the miniature. Yeah, I completely um, agree with that. I think adding some like flesh tones into some of the ones, particularly on the hand where like you've got more of like working skin as well, I think would uh, yeah. add to the sort of rawness and look of it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's look through some of the other photos here. Uh, we've got the back of, I think this is the same burner boy here with a barrel on the back here. Um, I think in terms of like you said, you was going for the heavy metal style and that definitely like reads with this completely. Um, I think especially in the way that you've painted the red and the way that you've highlighted some of these uh, fabric tassels around the top that, or the straps that are holding it on. Um, the way that you've like softly shaded the red, I think is really, really spot on. And the finest and the sharpness of the edge highlights is really, really fitting with the heavy metal style. It's not like a thick, stark, uh, highlight. I can definitely tell that you've got a lot of brush skill. Yeah, which is which is evident across all of the details on the miniature from what we can see in the photos. Um, I, re I really like the use of the kind of like desaturated red uh, for the barrel. I think that's really, really awesome. I think like a danger for the barrel is quite cool. Um, the damage and stuff that you've done on there is is actually quite interesting as well, like what you've painted. I think I would probably be a bit more uh, ref sort of maybe just be a bit more careful with how dark you go on some of the on some of the damage that's on there. There's like a couple of divots in the barrel that are almost near black. Um, I think a good opportunity to maybe add some rusting kind of colors in there. So it still has, uh, it doesn't look like it's a black hole, but it's got a bit of depth to it through like a, a through rust and sort of darker tones like that would help. I love the the attention to detail on the almost like the port bit where the, the pipe would go into the barrel. I think that's quite good. Um, you can really add some interest into that, maybe having some streaks of something running out of there. Um, you know, and the, the other thing I would say is following on with the weathering that I was saying about some of the divots and things and maybe not making them so, so deep. Um, I would potentially uh, advise on some on the lips. So you've got like a couple of the ribbed lips at the bottom, kind of like a third of the way up and then the one at the top. They protrude more on the barrel than anything else. So I'd probably go in and do some chipping on there and maybe add some rust onto those. Uh, they're the bits that would catch or would interact with objects around. Uh, around. Maybe if he's taking cover, he might rub up against a wall or something like that. Those are areas which would typically catch the catch the sort of like the, the, any any friction at all so adding interest onto those would work really well yeah i completely agree um i think one thing to bear in mind with the heavy metal style of painting kind of as a general rule is that there's always a really really high level of depth and technique and amount of layers of paint and the highlights that are applied on every single wear of the model whether that's an interesting part or not and one thing that i'm definitely noticed i know you said that these models aren't completely finished so you may well know this anyway but one thing that i've noticed in particular is on the trousers particularly on the back there's not that same level of depth and layering and highlight yeah. stages as there are on the other areas like for example the barrel um I, I can't really see the trousers from the front of this but if we look at some of the other models i think that that's raining true as well on these perhaps on the command, uh, perhaps yeah. as a part where you haven't painted yet like i said but i think just being aware of that and applying that same level of depth and attention to any area of the model even if it is the back of the model it's somewhere you're not really going to see i do think that that attention 
and level of, of depth, particularly on the amount of soft trading that you do on cloth and the amount of sharp highlights on, on some of the folds. I think that would make it a bit more fitting with the rest of the miniature in the style that you've painted it. Yeah, definitely. A couple of things to just throw in as well. With the skin tone, I think you've done a really great job of, of rendering it with all the volumes and the lighting on them that you've done. I love the use of the more sort of like sort of the desaturated paler tones on the knuckles and things. I think that's really good. Um, one thing to, to, to talk about, and I know I mentioned about weathering on the barrel on the, on the burner, but for specifically on, on, this, on this miniature is that like orcs as a, as a faction, they, they're they very ragtag. They pick up equipment, they scavenge, et cetera, especially with commandos who like operate behind enemy lines and do sneaky stuff. Um, bear in mind about maybe making a more variance in tone on your metallics. So for example, the magazine on the, on the pistol that he's got, that might not necessarily be the exact magazine that came when, with that gun when it was manufactured whenever. Like he might have picked up a different magazine. So you can use different tones on the metallics, like tone them more to brown, maybe turn, tone them a bit more to say, for example, like a darker metallic or whatever the case may be, just so it adds a bit of interest to the actual object. And it shows that the the equipment fits the narrative of the actual miniature as well. I think that's quite important. Yeah, I really agree with that. I think as well, like bearing in mind, even if you did want to do silver for all of those details, the odds that the metallic silver of the axe is going to be exactly the same shade of metallic silver as the weapon that would be Correct, you know, yeah. presumably from different ages or just, you know, different factories or whatever. Exactly. I think yeah. the if you just even if you did want to keep them silver and you wanted to highlight them and paint them in the same style, I think that's absolutely valid. But I think maybe using just a slightly darker or slightly brighter or warmer or cooler different steel colour on different parts of the metallics just to sort of block them out visually and have a bit more interest and it will make your eye spend more time looking at the model and kind of tracing around all of its details rather than just sort of seeing it as one big block of silver. Yeah, and and, and again, weathering is situational. Like if you really don't want to do heavy weathering, I totally understand that. But even on like when you see box art miniatures uh, done by the Heavy Metals team or done by lots of different companies out there, weathering that is done on them when they are weathered is still extremely refined and really, really like min like minimal on the model to add like subtlety. I think they've done that here. Like if you see like the, the yellow on the gun casing in particular, I think there is some of that like really, really sharp and, yeah. and precise weathering on there. But I think what kind of what you're saying is like making that narrative fit for the rest of the model. Correct, so if yeah. you are going to do some of that really, really subtle scratching and things like that on the yellow, I don't know why that wouldn't be on different areas of the weapon, like yeah. the magazine, for example, yeah. or like on the axe in particular. Yeah, like it, like the leather, for example, that the, the, like cloth and stuff that they're wearing, like they wouldn't have brand new clothes. It's not like they've just gone out to a shop and bought some, you know, like they'd, they'd, they'd be wearing them for ages, you know. And so, so it's a, Take that into consideration because it'll add a level of depth to your miniatures, which visually when someone's reading it and they're looking at what you've painted on that plastic miniature, it sells that narrative as well as the, the finish of the material or the, or the the object, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think you need to go mad doing like loads of chipping and scratching no, everywhere, no, no. but I think it's just making it more fitting with the narrative of Correct. the rest of the model. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, our next submission here is from someone who's chosen to remain anonymous, but they say, this is my current project. I'm following the Warhammer Plus guide, but the issues that I'm facing are my own doing and have happened to other models as well. I'm looking for advice on two parts. The first is the candy corn look of the lava part that the skin has, and I'd like it to look more realistic. And the second is that I cannot figure out how to highlight the gold chest and dangling symbols without them looking silly and also candy corn-ish. Well, you've picked a quite a difficult model. Like painting fire is is an, an avatar in general is actually quite a, quite an arduous uh, task. Like, there's lots of little intricacies and details on there, um, but also like I I, I completely sympathise with what you're saying because it is there's a lot to. I've painted one of these models myself, and I I understand exactly you know what you're tackling. So, um, one thing I would say about the flames is I think that like anything making the, the avatar look like magma or lava or like a volcanic kind of ash surface, whatever. Use real life reference, as I always say, Google image search, you know, flames, volcanic uh, ash fields, all those kind of things. And look at stuff that directly relates to the miniature. Obviously, an avatar is not real, but it, it you can take real life stuff and implement that on the model. And what I mean by that is the way that the cracks are lit, the way that the like, the, the volcanic heat is, is emanating from those recesses or from the, the areas of the model, which would have that effect. Um, the flames, I think for me. Uh, personally, in an opinionated statement, I think that you need to soften them a bit more in the sense of the transitions to make those flames look a bit more like they, they, the, the transition of colour is a bit smoother. Um, and that's really done with like just using very thin glazes, which is water tinted a hue of the colour, not just a thin paint. It needs to be translucent. So you can do lots of thin layers and dry them on and, and gradually shift that tone. Um, but I think, yeah, the flames look great. What would you say, George? Yeah, I think potentially one of the issues uh, that I'm seeing is perhaps an overuse of the bright point. So looking into the crack on the bottom of the thigh here, I'm noticing that there's a lot of that really, really bright yellow used. And I think that as a rule with like these kind of lighting and glowing effects, less is more when it yeah. comes to the brightest point of the highlight. So I take into consideration maybe just using a little bit less of that bright point. 
And additionally, I would consider using some different yellow and orange and red paints for the fire than I would on the magma, um, even if you are going to use like the same color, because obviously an avatar is difficult because you've got fire and magma yeah. and red armor. There's a lot going on. But just trying to add some visual contrast between those by using different hues of red and different hues of orange and so on, I think would just be able to visually help you separate those a bit more. And I think that it would also help them to look equally as bright as each other but without overlapping too much, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the other point that you brought up about, obviously, the gold detailing, like um, one thing to, to bear in mind is obviously like the, a lot of the tones in gold are very very comparable to the tones in like fire and red and stuff like that they've got oranges they've got you know, some darker browns things like that so one thing to bear in mind is obviously on the on the metallics i actually think they read really well on the model and it, it is clearly defined as the like the, the brooch or the like little uh like dangling sort of the details and things like that um the other thing the other way to go on it and something you can do on it is you can make them make those those dangling parts on near the loincloth for example maybe made out of stone or marble or something like that now i'm not saying you have to go and do all the or the line work on marble. But what you can do is add a stone like color. So if it's like a stone totem hanging from that 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 model's um that model's belt, that lighter tone of like a gray or a light a white or a desaturated white for like, a, like an ivory or mar marble kind of like uh, material, what that will do is it will just contrast the black tabard really nicely, draw the eye to it without clashing too much. Like yellows in metallics and yellow acrylics tend to clash a little bit sometimes. Um, and if you can just use a different color that still insinuates a material which wouldn't be damaged by fire, that that potentially would would, would work quite well. The last thing I say about the, the gold on the chest, which I think actually looks really good in the way you've lit it and done it, it looks great. I'd try and make the, the gemstones or any of the soul stones that are on that piece as high contrast to the rest of the model. So I'd definitely go green with them, make them like emerald gems and things like that and make them really high saturation of uh, value, uh, value contrast onto the rest of the model. I think that'll look, that'll help massively. Yeah, and I think something to just bear in mind for, for anyone who's listening to this episode is to always trust the process and realize that when you are in the early stages of painting a model, it can feel a bit more difficult than it's, or, or it, it doesn't quite look quite right. I think sometimes it's not necessarily that you're doing anything wrong, but it's that you haven't seen the context of the rest of the piece coming together. Yeah, correct. I think that you're calling this like this, this candy cornish look, but I, I it, personally, I actually completely disagree. I don't think that this is that, uh, stereotypical sort of candy corn look. I, I, I do disagree with that. I think that trust the process with this miniature and once you see all of it coming together and it's on the base and you've got the rest of the sub-assemblies together, that's when you can really start fine-tuning little things like the stages of the highlights and the way that you've painted it. Yeah, no, de definitely. And again, don't focus on the end result focus on the process and the things you're doing stage by stage to get to that end result. It's better you, that you'll reach the end if you just focus on each of the incremental steps that you're doing. Okay, our next submission here is from Rob O'Dub, who says, <laughs> Hey folks, I really enjoy listening to the podcast, and since listening to it, I feel like my painting has come along. Uh, thank you very much. I wanted to get as much feedback on this chap as possible. I used a YouTube tutorial for the cloak and a Darren Latham one for the face, which I was chuffed with. I've received some feedback already from my friend who's a commission painter, but I'd really love to hear your opinions. So I'm going to caveat this with, I, I think you're going for more of like a gritty, grim, dark kind of style with this. Um, weathering is 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 really, really great to add to a miniature. It tells that story, that narrative, which I'm always really fond of. Um, one thing I would say is that situation also look where would actually catch, as in like you've done it on the knee, for example, or the area as well. You've done it on the bottom of the shin plate. So it's like it rubs against the toe plate, for example. I think really good use of understanding of where things function, how things function, how the weathering would appear on this has been done, which is good. Um, but weathering can sometimes be a bit overkill. Like you can go too far into it, if that makes sense. You should tell a story, have have obviously situational uh, damage to the to the object, but it shouldn't overall detract, in my mind, from 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 the the actual paint job and what you're trying to render. And that is obviously an opinionated statement, but I think just less is always better in my less is more is essentially what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, I think a way that you could potentially like cut back and and keep that level of of haggardness and and wear and weathered look to the model but without having it look too crazy and over the top would be to start adding some things like some highlights of the yellow within that layer of chipping yeah i think that chipping could be a multi-layered process and i don't think it's as black and white as this part's metal and this part is the is the yellow paint i think that you could go in there and if you're i'm not sure if you're doing this like with a sponge or just with your brush but however you've applied that technique of, of applying the the weathering chips to that i think do, doing it with some other shades of 
highlight stages of yellow, I think would add a lot of visual interest and it would kind of break up the armor panels and it would keep it looking yellow and not have this kind of majority color of black and gray kind of creeping back in too much. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, the other thing I can see just from looking at the photos of the miniature, like um, you definitely got great brush control uh, and that's demonstrated by the way you block stuff in, how neatly it is, the the, the, the personal heraldry on the tilt shield, all those kind of things, um, specifically as well, like the word terror that's written on the shin scroll and stuff like that. So you definitely got that ability. Where I would probably, uh, probably sort of use that to my advantage is there are other little things on the miniature which you can start adding extra highlights onto, like for example, the wax on the purity seal, you can do the tiny little catches of light and stuff where the, there's variance in the wax. Um, all those kind of other things that will add a lot more interest as you're looking around the model with all the details. Um, I really, really liked uh, the, the the use of the, the the warmer red as well on there, just literally just to, to break that up, the overall colour scheme up as well and add that interest onto the model. I thought that was really great. Um, yeah, just one small thing to pull apart as well. Um, personally, I would have drilled out the barrels or done <laughs> at least a, a black dot of paint just to give that kind of more realistic look to the model because you've kind of gone for that with the weather and you're kind of implying, I want this to look like a, a, a yeah. real life uh, um something that could exist in real life. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I think that just having that attention to detail on the rest of the model would add a lot of value. It just needs to choose whatever tool that they're going <laughs> to do the barrels with, George. Uh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and additionally, I think the face is really, really well painted. I know that you mentioned you used a Darren Latham tutorial. Um, I've noticed that you've painted the eyes and the pupils of the eyes. So you've clearly got the brush skill and the precision to be able to execute that. Yeah. But one thing that I have noticed is that you haven't picked out the teeth on in the mouth. I yeah, think yeah. That as humans, we are immediately drawn to the face of a model. That is just something that we that we naturally see. And I think going as far as you can to, and spending just you know a few extra seconds or a couple of extra minutes on on that face to pick out all of those details, I think would add a huge amount of value. And I think that just just picking out the teeth, if you can, would be a great way to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've painted this this captain. It's the Leviathan one, and it's it's an awesome model. I I, I I'd always advise whenever you're approaching painting a face, like George said, it's the first thing that you you look at as a human, just instinctively. Um, I'd always if you can try and paint it separately so that you can give your full attention. It's not just about doing it, whether you can access it or not based on a sub assembly, just giving it the attention that it requires because it is that focal point that you're, that anyone who looks at the model is drawn to will help you massively. Okay. Our final submission here is from the evil Chihuahua. I think this is the best, the best, the best name of someone submitted. I think like I, I, this is awesome. Okay. They say, Hey guys, really enjoying the podcast and finding it quite inspiring and educational. Thank you very much. Uh, been painting for around a year or so. I do rely on contrast paints for the most part, but might soon give the non-contrast approach a try. Sisters is my first 40k army for me to paint, and they are pretty challenging. This is my favourite one I have completed so far. I shied away from painting the every metal style edge highlights, just looking for some general feedback and maybe some advice on making the jump from using contrast, or should I? Well, I, I wish my my models after a year when I started painting all those years ago looked as good as this because that's a phenomenal achievement in the time frame you've been painting. Um, you've picked probably one of the most detailed factions in 40k to and paint. Some so, of the smallest miniatures as well. Yeah, and some <laughs> of, I, I always go on about pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. So you've, you've done you've doubled doubled up on this one, which is great. So um, so yeah, no, really really well done. I think that everything is neatly sectioned. It's blocked in really smoothly. It looks like everything is neat as well, which I think is really important. You should always push yourself to paint as neat as possible. It's immediately obvious as well what all of the details are and everything yeah, is, it reads is very, very well. readable. Yeah. Um, I like the use of purple on the uh, surround to the skulls, like the frame around the skulls. There's a nice warm colour there. Just to, it kind of like you've got a warm colour, but it's quite a quite a cold looking detail in the sense of not the tones and colours, but just all those skulls. It's quite like a evil thing. So that balance of like warm and cold in, in various ways looks quite good. I think as well, you've got like some transfers applied here, which shows like an extra level of detail. I know you've yeah. got some text on the on the purity seal there. You've got one on the knee and one on the cloth as well. Well, well it adds that richness of narrative to the miniature, which which sometimes is often overlooked. And I and I, and I, I really, really think you've done uh, overall the overall, the, the whole finish of the miniatures is really, really well done. Um, regarding contrast, like there's a big stigma with them. And like, I just want to always say this whenever anyone brings it to the table and talks about it. We've done an episode with Paul on it on the, on the podcast. So you can obviously uh, have a watch of that and, and see uh, way more in-depth thoughts on it. But um, in general, like they're used by all manner and all level of painters for various different things, be it like a, a more sort of top end or high end for filter layers, for glazes, for little tiny little subtle ads, uh, additions of saturation or tone because they're strong paints. And, and again, if you're trying to get an army painted really quickly, they're perfect for that, you know? Um, I think one of the things that you could do if you did want to start transitioning to not using the contrast paints as much would be rather than just kind of just going all in, you could do what uh, I think has been sort of coined as contrast plus, yeah. which would be to to get the model to the stage where you've already gotten it to, but then to go in with the brush and the layer paints and start picking out some extra details. I think that could be really, really easy and approachable to do. For example, something that you could do would be 
uh, on the lenses on the helmet, for example, go in there with just a slightly brighter red or, or even towards a, an orange hue and just pick out some highlights on that lenses. I think that that would draw your eye immediately to the head and it would make it stand out as well by having that brighter red in there compared to the sort of same uh, darker red that you've got for the cloth. I think that it would just help separate those details and it would instinctively draw your eye to the face of the miniature because it is just that much brighter. No, totally. And, and like that contrast plus method of painting where you do all what you've done currently on the miniatures and then add additional highlight stages and details with normal acrylics, that process will help you to learn those acrylics and how they behave compared to the contrast that you're more used to. I always say this, but like confidence in miniature painting is just experience. If you've never used it before, it's going to be hard for you to jump that gap and start doing it. But the moment you do, you'll start learning things which will directly start improving your painting. Um, I, we, I had a look at some of the other photos of, of, the, of the miniature and you've done some really refined little sort of beads just on her waist, which shows that you've got a really great uh, use of the brush control, which means like things like, for example, the catch light in the lenses, um, other sort of little buttons and dials and things, you can really start adding that interest onto the, onto the miniature with those, which I think is great. Um, but overall, a really well-presented miniature. The base is, looks great. It's nice and desaturated against the, the sort of more saturated tones on the cloth and the white areas on the miniature. Um, it's balanced really well. And uh, for, for a year of painting, you're producing models like that, you should be thoroughly, thoroughly happy with where you're at as a painter after that time frame. So thanks for watching the debut episode of Critique Clinic. I really hope that all of you that have submitted photos have enjoyed the feedback and it's helped you in some way. If you're watching this and you're painting your own miniatures, I hope there's been something that you can take away from it to improve and add to your miniatures. And of course, this is the first episode of the show. So if you have any suggestions for ways that we can improve it and other things that you'd like to hear us talk about, then please do let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to submit photos of your miniatures for a future episode of Critique Clinic, please check the links in the description of this episode down below on YouTube. And you can find links to our Patreon where over there you can become a member of the Discord and through there you can submit photos of your miniatures. There's more details if you follow those links. Thank you everyone. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks time on the next episode.